Hello, it's another edition of PLUS Reports, a compilation of the stories and events that made the news recently. Welcome, I'm Jacinta Obiuku. Idel Fetri is a special time of year for the nearly half of Africa's population who are adherents of Islam. But this year's celebration is different amid the continued coronavirus pandemic and devastation it has caused across the continent. As Muslims in Nigeria join their counterparts across the world to celebrate this year's Eid al some Nigerian residents have lamented the low-key celebration attributed to the new wave of COVID-19 and bad economy. Destiny Momo has more on this. The holy month of Ramadan is an opportunity for Muslim brothers and sisters to deepen their relationship with Allah, promote a life of sacrifice, charity, and love for one another. However, as the fast culminated in the Eid al-Fitri celebration, a cross-section of Lagos residents say the economic situation has affected the festivities. And the economic effects, you know, things are very expensive. So unlike um, before, so the whole economy is a bit hard this time. But despite that, we managed to pull through. The celebration is a low key, like you can see. Unlike other days that uh, at the end of Ramadan like this, people throw parties everywhere, but it's, it's unlike before. In 2015, the pure water was five naira. Now it is 20 naira. Look at that. Some people cannot avoid to buy it, even paracetamol. It's now 100 naira, 150 from 30 naira. So all those have our things. We have to, there is to be solution. They are supposed to be in my village and I couldn't go because I don't have money. I enjoy Eid Ramadan, Fatal and Mubarak. I enjoy them well, well. Me and children. Ah, now the money is there around. The money is in the matter now. It's written now, it don't cost. See the rice, rubber, 2,200 naira for one rubber. They speak prayers and wishes for the season. So we're looking forward to see the prayer answered. You understand? So we thank God for, I mean, allowing us to see the end of Ramadan. Inshallah, 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 100%. We're happy about that. That one is the Kabul. And enjoy that one, same. You got answer for that. Ahead of the celebration, federal government had revisited the COVID-19 protocols, which is to be duly observed in religious gatherings and social centers. Was there compliance at various mosques? Lockdown, lockdown is not observed. You can't observe lockdown in the mosque, but they, they, yeah, the, yeah, the protocol is observed. You understand? I, I observe my prayer at the state house in Obalinde here. So before you come in, you must have your mask on. After all is said and done, a call here is for Muslims to pray for a united Nigeria in the wake of the spate of insecurity bedeviling the country. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. Meanwhile, Governor Amadou Omaru Fenty rejoined other Muslims to perform the two rakat at Madubo Adama Central Mosque Yola in commemoration of this year's Eid al Fetri celebration. The governor was accompanied by some members of the State Executive Council where he urged Nigerians to pray for stability of the nation amidst the insecurity bedeviling the nation. <laughs> The chief imam of Modibo Adama Central Mosque in Yola, Kadi Amadu Boboy, led the two rakat prayers. In his sermon after the prayers, he explained the virtues of giving out zakat al fitr after the completion of Ramadan and called on Muslims to carry out the act for abundant reward from Allah. Kadi Boboy enjoined Muslims to follow the traditions of Prophet Muhammad and rededicate themselves towards serving Allah beyond the Ramadan period. He led special prayers for peace and tranquility, progress and development of Adamawa and Nigeria as a whole. After the prayers, Governor Fintory accompanied Lamido Adamawa, Dr. Bakindo Aliyo Mustafa, 
inside the palace where they exchanged solar pleasantries. In an interview with journalists, the governor congratulates the Muslim Umar for the successful completion of this year's Ramadan. He appeals for prayers and tolerance among the diverse ethno-religious citizens of the state, noting that peace is the panacea to any meaningful development. I wish them well, and I urge everybody to strengthen love and unity among ourselves. Uh, let us do our best to ensure that we close the gap of differences, the gap of hatred, so that we can promote peace and unity in the country, so that we can stimulate the security and love for one another. The governor was accompanied by the Secretary to the State Government, Bashir Ahmed, and members of the State House of Assembly and other commissioners. Well, congratulations to the Muslim faithful as they keep up with the reason for the season. Maintenance culture is an attitude which is sadly lacking in Nigeria, whether in home, office, school or factory, which has poorly affected the quality of public property. The International Facility Management Association, IFMA Nigeria chapter, in commemorating the 2021 World Facility Management Day, says uh, there is a gap in maintenance culture of facilities in Nigeria and calls for more awareness and education on facilities management practices. Take a look. The gathering of these professionals, experts in the field of architecture and environment is to address the loopholes in facility management with the theme Celebrating FM, standing tall beyond the pandemic which borders on the renewed importance that should be placed on human health and safety coupled with building sustainability and resilience. The Lagos State Safety Commission is charged with the mandate of ensuring the safety and health of Lagosians and we see facility managers as partners in progress in this drive. There is a need for us to incorporate and uh, bring in, at the point of inception, experts in facility management that will also help, you know, when we are generating and formulating design. We cannot continue to design around our failures. When you want to design on a space, you are recommending 20-story building. They say, where is electricity to operate the lift? And I said, are we going to be like this forever? It's so sad that in this part of the world, in Nigeria, our maintenance culture is zero. And you and I are to blame. Part of the event was a panel section where the vital work of facilities manager, frontline workers were recognized during the heat of the pandemic. Facility managers, architects, engineers, plumbers are all frontline workers. I mean, mostly when you hear about COVID, all you heard about was the doctors, the nurses, but trust me, we had cleaners there every day. We had electricians, we had plumbers, architects, we were all at the forefront of this pandemic. The panelists also gave a way forward in tackling the issues of maintenance culture of facility management. When you're talking of maintaining the building, you don't get the materials, you don't get a replacement. When we're specifying things or when we're using any material, let's always think of local content. No one wants to do any sort of maintenance until it becomes a problem. You know, no one wants to clean the gutter until the gutter is clogged. You increase the lifespan of the building if you do continuous maintenance. Yes, maintenance culture, not too good. But again, there's a reason of hope. There's a slight element of light at the end of the tunnel because a lot is happening and a lot will continue to happen. And for us in IFMA, we're not only committed to ensure that um, this toga is taken away through a renewed purpose, which speaks to capacity building. The thrust here is that the notion that bad maintenance culture should be treated as myth and energies should be channeled towards building a good maintenance culture. While well, research has it that most public property services rarely perform as well as desired, the causes emanate from deficiencies in design, construction, commissioning and maintenance which will eventually deteriorate the condition of the property. 
to insecurity now. They call for drastic action to be taken by the federal government to tackle the spate of insecurity has been re-echoed by another set of concerned Nigerians. This time it is by the Lagos branch of Nigerian Bar Association during a press conference as part of activities for its annual conference. Plus TV Africa, Demste Momo, filed this report. As part of its intervention rose to some of the challenges facing the nation, the media pally opened up several issues bedeviling the nation. The conversation here is to call on the government to take more proactive steps to curb the rising insecurity across the country. Uh, people are no longer safe. People are no longer sleeping with their two eyes closed in Nigeria. And so we must begin to profess solution to the spate of insecurity. And we can't stop talking about the issue of corruption. We know where we are today as a nation because of uh, corruption. It has retarded our growth. We started with other nations like Dubai. Uh, most of the Asian nations, we started together. But if you see where they are today and where we are, uh, you know the difference. And of course, the reason for that is you know, the issue of corruption. Other conversations include the ongoing strike by the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, Jusun, and lessons learned. We want this matter to be resolved once and for all. Despite the fact that the government has, uh, uh, governors have made these their promises, oh, we will start implementing in May. Jusun is saying until we see that if implementation being carried out, we are not calling off the strike. It's been painful to lawyers. We don't have any other source of income other than you know, lawyering and going to court. You can imagine how many months now we've been idle at home, lawyers' uh, uh, fees are suffering, people are not putting food on their table. Many lawyers have turned to beggars because of the fact that where they practice their law uh, is you know, it's locked, it's under lock and key. But it is a painful decision we've taken and the NBA leadership has actually thrown their support and, you know, and wait behind this uh, justice strike. For members of the MBA, this year's conference gives an opportunity to provide an enabling ground for the other problems facing the Nigerian judiciary, which includes that of financial autonomy. Our conference as FIDEL conference, and everywhere we go, is to bring the missing element that has um, led to this country nose diving to this point and that missing element is public interest. This year's MBA conference which will bring together members of the executive, the legislature and the judiciary on the round table. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. Well, insecurity is still one of the issues bedeviling Nigeria and there are opinions that there are many signs that government efforts to fight criminality, kidnapping and rebel activity are not producing results. You're watching Plus Report and there's more after this break.